apologies, this video is a little bit late. I have just woke up about half hour, 40 minutes or so ago after a very eventful but a very enjoyable day yesterday in Stevenage, a new ground to tick off for myself. Another away day, first away day of the season. And of course, it did finish at the Lamex Stadium exactly how I predicted it on the Charlton Chronicles. Stevenage 1, Charlton Athletic 1. <sighs> yeah, first game under Michael Appleton. As you could probably tell by the title, I think I would probably describe it as a bit of a smash and grab, to be honest with you. I felt that we were pretty lucky to come away with a point based off our performance. And I think Stevenage fans will be felt a little bit hard done by for the fact that they haven't come away with three points. I didn't think they were a brilliant side by any means. But that being said, they were exactly what I expected a Steve Evans side to look like. You know, they were physical. They didn't have a lot of the ball. And I expected that considering Appleton likes to play possession football. They looked good going forward. They looked threatening where our defence couldn't cope. They shot off all avenues in the midfield. You know, defensively, they looked quite strong. And while I didn't think they were fantastic, you know, they weren't exactly a side that I don't think they bullied us and would have smashed the living daylights out of us and they scored multiple goals against us. But they were better. That's what we have to say. And we were very poor. And to be perfectly honest with you, like I said, I think we were very lucky to come away with a point yesterday. And dare I even say it, it is probably the most extreme way of looking at it. But yesterday... Was that performance no different to what we've seen under Padine Olden? We'd have to say yes. It's pretty much exactly the performance that we've seen throughout this entire season, to be honest with you. And that's not me, you know, jumping on Appleton's back or anything. You know, I obviously have his full support. And it was very nice to see, you know, the away end getting behind Appleton, singing Appleton's Red Army after the game. But that performance was no different to what we've seen so far this season. And like I said, that is not me having a go at Appleton. But unfortunately, I think the most extreme way of looking at it is that performance, again, was below par and we just didn't look very good at all until the very late stages where we made substitutions where we looked somewhat all right a lot better in the second half we'd have to say but still just didn't look threatening going forward defensively really struggled and like I said ultimately in my opinion anyway very lucky to come away with a point so let's get into the starting 11 shall we Mark Appleton's first team selection and it was quite an interesting one we do have to say Harry Ice did kept his spot in between the sticks which didn't really surprise me considering Maynard Brewer did travel with the Australian national team. Apparently, he didn't play for Australia. I may have that wrong, but I think even for the fact that he travelled is probably the reason why he wasn't picked. But Ice did kept his spot. Back four of James Abanqua getting his first start, but at right back this time, a very interesting uh, decision to play him there. And of course, the two centre backs were Michael Hector, obviously returning from international duty from Jamaica, Abanqua returning from international duty with the Ireland under 21s, Lloyd Jones as Hector centre back partner, and Tyra Eden as the left back. The midfield, I don't know whether it was a 4 2 3 1 or a 4 3 3. We kind of like inverted between the two, and then obviously when we made substitutions, we went two up top. But I think it was a 4 2 3 1. So we had Jules Dobson and Croy Anderson as the midfielders, sort of the holding midfielders or the deep lying midfielders, should I say. Tyrese Campbell on the right, Blackett Taylor on the left, Chem Campbell through the middle, and Miles Lieburn leading the line up top as the lone striker. Of course, a number of notable absentees from the squad. No Nathan Asimway, who's out with a minor quad injury, so hopefully that is not too serious. And of course, the big one. Alfie May out with a concussion and obviously due to the concussion rules that'll probably rule him out for next week's game against Wickham as well so I knew that was going to be a massive hole to fill but I felt a little bit rest assured considering that we had Leeburn to replace him and I felt that Leeburn in the two games that he has played against Crawley and obviously in his cameo against Fleetwood he has looked good he has looked threatening he looks a lot bigger than what he was last season which is incredible to say because Leeburn is you know he's a man mountain but he looks like a tank this season so yeah I was rest assured to have him up front, a bank while playing right back out of position, I was a bit concerned. But that being said, we didn't really have any other choice. You know, Tanai Watson, Watson was out of the squad, understandably, because he's obviously not up to speed. And that's exactly what we can expect from a player that we signed on deadline day that's been without at the club since the summer. Very good player, but never learn our lesson, do we? But yeah, it was a very interesting lineup to say the least. And of course, we have to talk about the bench, as we did see... Chuck Sanike making his return, a very unlikely return. I never actually thought we'd ever see him again in a Cheltenham shirt. But yeah, I was very happy to see him on the bench. And of course, he added to the likes of Maynard Brewer, Lucas Ness, Terrell Thomas, Terry Taylor, uh, Louis Watson and Slobodan Tedic. So I felt all in all, it was a fairly decent lineup. As I said, with Stevenage, we knew what side they were going to be. We knew what threat they were going to pre pre uh, present us with. Obviously, top of the league at the moment. You can only read so much into the league table um, at this stage in the season, but they are flying. First half, shocking. Absolutely terrible. I don't think we really... I don't even recall a half-decent chance we had if we had any chances in that first half, to be honest with you. Stevenage were just a better team. Like I said at the intro, they just shut off all avenues of our play. Attackingly, we just couldn't cope. You know, we did the same thing to Lieburn yesterday in that first half. 
than what we've done all season and what we did with Stockley. Just punt the ball long and pray. You know, their centre-backs, Carl Piergiani, fantastic defender, and their other centre-back, number six, I think it was, or whoever it was that was next to Piergiani, just won everything in the air. They were just so imposing and dominant at the back, and we couldn't get anything going forward. You know, we punt the balls long to Lieburn, and even when he did win a header, if he won a header, I don't know if he did, but it, and whenever he did get hold of the ball, there was no one there to latch onto the head, to the headers or his bringing, da or bringing the ball down. There was no one there to latch onto it. You know, there was just a reluctance to push forward, a reluctance to press when we was out of possession. Our wingers really struggled yesterday. Like they, they were very, very poor. And Stevenage found it very easy to deal with those. Midfield was non-existent, except for Jules Dobson once again imposing himself. And I will actually back Roy Anderson yesterday because I felt well, he, wasn't out, he wasn't outstanding. He didn't have that good of a game. But he, at least he got himself about and he got stuck in because I did see Anderson make a few decent tackles yesterday. And don't even get me started on the defence. Both fullbacks were shocking yesterday. Tyro Eden really struggled. Out of position, he struggled with the ball at his feet. He gave the ball away a few times. And he looked nervous. And a banqua was probably even worse, to be honest with you. Yes, he's playing out of position. Yes, he's just come back from international duty. But it wasn't a good cameo and it wasn't a good first appearance in the Charlton show. It really was poor. I actually don't think the centre-backs had that bad of a game. I actually felt Hector played all right yesterday and Jones, once again, was pretty solid at the back. Stevenage found it very easy to play against us. You know, like I said, they shut off our avenues in terms of attack. They, we rarely got a shot off, you know. <clears throat> In the midfield, we just we just didn't have anything. And then defensively, they just found it very easy to tear us a new one. You know, they hit the side netting early on and their goal. You know, ball comes across on the far side. Jamie Reed takes a touch, has a shot. Initially, I thought it was at the near post, but turns out it wasn't. I've just seen it back literally just now. Fires it across goal in the back of the net. And he's obviously on fire at the moment. Was fantastic for Stevenage in League 2 last season. And he's hitting the goals for them in League 1 this time. So fair play to him. But... We have to talk about the defending. Like, again, what is that? How are you giving him that time and space? How is he allowed to do that? But we also have to talk about the goalkeeper, Eisted. I, I, I didn't understand people getting on Maynard Brewer's back and he obviously got dropped and we've dropped him for this. I'm sorry, but can you name one save that Eisted has made since being in between the sticks? At least with Maynard Brewer, he makes the save. Yes, he kind of parries it. Yes, the opposition can get it back across the box and they can score. But that's more in terms of the defence in front of him. I really do blame most of the defense, or, 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 or for most of the goals that Maynard Brewer has conceded. The poor defence in front of him. He's been thrown into the deep end, and at least Maynard Brewer throws himself about. He is a fantastic shot stopper. Yes, his distribution could do with some work, but at least he makes the save. I did. His distribution was terrible yesterday. Kicking was awful. And have we even seen him make a save? I've seen the highlight back. He sticks a leg out. He sticks his right leg out to try and save it. He doesn't even make an attempt to save it. May I'm, maybe I'm being a bit too harsh, but I just don't know how Maynard Brewer has lost his spot in the team. I think that showed me yesterday why Maynard Brewer should be number one over Eisted. He hasn't made a save. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's conceded 11 goals this season. Seven of them have come from opposition in the league below. You know, yes, they're in cup competitions, but still, he hasn't covered himself in glory with those goals that he conceded. Yes, the defending could have been better, but still, he's not covered himself in glory. He has not made one save. I genuinely could not nail you, tell you one save he's made. Into the break, 1-0 down. We just didn't look competent at all. You know, booze ringing around the ground. And to be honest with you, I can hardly blame them because we just did not look at the races whatsoever. Our fullbacks getting skinned, our wingers being ineffective and very poor trying to push into play. And Lieburn was left pretty much isolated. You know, he didn't have much service. But even when he did have the ball, I didn't think Lieburn had a great game. Second half... We turned it up a little bit. You know, we got a lot better in the second half. We pushed forward a lot more and definitely, in my opinion, I think dictated most of the attacks in the second half. But still, we just didn't look that competent going forward. We didn't, we didn't look that threatening going forward and really even really threatened Stevenage, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, we had one shot on target out of 12 shots and that was the goal that we eventually scored from the penalty spot. It just tells you what you really need to know. In terms of the substitutions... Um, who came off? Croy Anderson come off. He was replaced by uh, Louis Watson for his first league appearance. Obviously, as I said, Anderson, I don't think he had a brilliant game by any means, but I will give him credit in the first half for getting stuck in and getting about, you know, and making those tackles as Dobson did as well. Uh, Chem Campbell came off. He was replaced with uh, Terry Taylor. And Terrell Thomas replaced James Abanqua, who, as I said, Abanqua had a, had a really poor game. And uh, Chem Campbell, to be honest with you, I didn't even know he was on the pitch. He had a very non existent game. Terrell Thomas. Phew, I know we didn't have many options at right back, but we can never bring him on at right back ever again. I never, ever, ever want to see him play on the right side. We did realise our mistake and we put him on the left-hand side and put Eden on the right. Obviously, Eden had a very poor game as well yesterday, but yeah, never bring Thomas at right back on ever again. And then Terry Taylor come on as well. Um, yeah, I, I can't really comment on his cameo and he obviously received an injury. 
um, through the number of penalty appeals that we have had. And we do, unfortunately, have to talk about it. I, like I said, I didn't want to let the officiating get in the way of our performance, but I think I have to talk about it because the ref was absolutely shocking. We had four or maybe even more penalty appeals yesterday. And some of the decisions, honestly, are just outrageous. The first one, I think, was in the first half on Karoy Anderson. I've seen that back. It's a stonewall penalty. He puts the ball past the defender. He wipes him out. It's a clear as day penalty. Nothing given. The second one was a, was a handball appeal. To be honest with you, I can't really comment on it. I have watched it back countless times. I've tried to see it, but my it's my eyesight. I'm just absolutely terrible. I cannot see a thing. Um, but yeah, I can't really comment on it. Some people People have said apparently the defender literally just punches the ball, but I can't comment on it because I couldn't really see it properly. And then Terry Taylor's, he gets absolutely wiped out in the box. Ref doesn't give it. Apparently, well, the, some journalists were saying he dislocated his shoulder. Some, some others were saying he split his head open. That doesn't come from nothing, you know? That does not come from nothing. And the ref obviously booked the two substitutes, that or two other subs that come on, which of course were an EK and Tedich. Chuck's an EK coming on to a very good reception and I think the reception that he warranted and the reception that he needed he's obviously shot of confidence at the moment and he's obviously hungry to get back he really wants to get back in a Charlton shirt and it was really nice to see him come on and the same with Tedic, you know as well going two up top obviously taking Leeburn off who like I said didn't have a great game and I think Tyrese Campbell came off as well Campbell was poor yesterday I'm sorry he was really poor he just did not get anything down his right hand side and when he did try and do anything nothing come off he was very poor yesterday but Obviously, Aniko and Tedic got booked for complaining to the referee. The ref was just, as I said, an absolute joke. And the linesman probably... Well, I, the linesman, I think, and the linesman, I think, may as well not have been there. He was absolutely terrible yesterday. But like I said, I don't want to get the officiating too much in the way of the performance, even as bad as they were, because our performance just wasn't good enough. And eventually, with 11 minutes of stoppage time, in the 92nd minute, Tedic gets wiped out. Referee eventually gives a penalty. Going to be honest with you, soft penalty. Definitely soft. Probably weren't even a penalty, but I think the ref just gave it because he thought, well, I've done wrongdoings. I may as well just give him one. So I was just sat there saying, right, let's just shut up and just take this one because I don't think it was a penalty, to be honest with you. Well, maybe it was, but it was a very, very soft. And then Blackett Taylor steps up, smashes it into the roof of the net, absolutely drills it. The, the uh, keeper, Ashby Hammond, guesses the right way, but he puts enough power and height on it, blasts it into the back of the net for one all. And uh, yeah, that's the game. That is the game, really. Stevenage won, Charlton won. <sighs> we got the point. That's all that matters. I think we have to take a point from that, uh, considering the performance. Like I said, I felt that we were very lucky to come away with a point. A very gutless performance for most of it, to be honest with you. But I think we were very lucky to snatch a point from the penalty. Like I said, the performance just wasn't good enough. Eisted should not be number one anymore. Uh, we uh, The fact that Maynard Brewer's lost his spot in the first team because of him is a joke. A bank while had a very poor cameo. Hector and Jones, I felt, actually played all right yesterday. Jones more so. I thought he played a lot better. Eden struggled badly. Dobson was his usual self. Obviously not as imposing, but he still got stuck about and he still got about the place. Anderson, I'll give credit for getting stuck in. Campbell was shocking. Tyrese Campbell, that is. Chem Campbell was basically non-existent. Blackett Taylor couldn't really get much going. He tried, but he couldn't really get much going and obviously scored the penalty. Lieberman was very ineffective in terms of the subs Louis Watson I actually felt played well and I think in the two games that he has played in the cameos that he has made one obviously against Crawley yes it was in the EFL trophy but he still played well and even yesterday I thought he played well as well you know he had a decent opportunity in the second half where he fired a shot from outside the box which um went just wide a very decent curling effort and I think it is now time in my opinion for Anderson to take a bit of a break from the first team I think as the games have gone on progressively we've seen his inexperience shine through and I think we do need that extra quality and that's where Watson comes in I think that this is the, his chance to get into that team with obviously the injuries that we have in midfield McGrandles is more long term whereas Fraser and Kamara are being assessed at the moment they could very well be ready by next weekend against Wickham but I don't know but I think regardless of whoever comes in I think Anderson does need that break from the first team now and I think that he needs to learn properly off the bench and you know get that more minutes from that from that from there because as I said I think progressively his inexperience has shown Terrell Thomas never bring him on at right back I don't care if we've not got any options in that position never ever ever bring him on at right back ever again Terry Taylor unfortunate with the injury that he sustained and of course he had to be subbed off and Lucas Ness come on in his place um, I hope it's not too serious for Terry because unfortunately I mean it's been a difficult start for Taylor so far I do want to see more from him um, and obviously the injury ain't going to help him but I won't be too harsh on him because I think he is a longer term project but that being said I think in the games he has played he hasn't been that great but I do want to give him a bit more time Chucks and EK was fantastic off the bench. We do have to say he was fantastic and showed exactly how big of a player he could be for us. And, and he showed exactly what kind of player we all know that he is. We know how impactful he can be. I spoke about how imposing Stephen Hitch's defenders were on the game and how physical they were and how we struggled to get anything going. The second we brought Chucks on, they were scared. You know, we got forward a lot more. Chucks, you know, he bullied them. He, and he's exactly what he is. 
he is a player that defenders hate playing against because he bullies them because he's physical. And obviously keeping him fit, let's face it, it is impossible. But if we can, if, and it is the biggest if of all mankind, if we can keep him fit, he will be a massive player for us. Very, 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 very big player. And I'm very happy to see him back in a championship. And Tedich as well, I thought he played all right as well. You know, he got himself involved in the game. Alfie May was a big miss. It was very clear to see. And even Nathan Asimway, to be fair, was a big miss. That natural right back, obviously, with a banqua. I don't want to be too harsh on him because it was his first game, but he was poor. And I know he was out of position and he came back for an interception duty, but he was poor. But Asimway... He was a miss in the right-back position, I will say that, and hopefully his injury is not too serious. And obviously, May was a big loss, but what can I say? His concussion, unfortunately, will keep him out for a little bit longer, I reckon. But, yeah, that's the game. I think we have to be uh, I think we have to be quite lucky, to be honest with you, for the fact that we did get a point, our first away point of the season, which is just depressing enough as it is. But we got the point, that's all that matters, and we've just got to take it and move on, and hopefully we can go into the Wickham game with a much better performance. That is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, and turn on those post notifications so you're notified of every time I upload a new video. We are 10 subscribers away from 4,300 subs. If we could get to that very soon, that'd be absolutely awesome. What do you guys think of the game? Let me know in the comments below. This is with Tyler Ronitson. Have a nice day, and I will see you all in the next video. Take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all then.